My name is Madison Jeffrey, and this is the Wicker's Rights platform. We are broadcasting live from the Wicker's Rights studio. I know it has been a while, but I am back now. Now, the Taxi Driver Association have been talking about a particular issue in which points coming off the license and the top it off to receiving charges. We are here to, to, to discuss some issues that are negatively affecting us as taxi drivers throughout the country. Now, at the end of the day, if you're really to the average man, you know, it, it just flow the head. But doesn't that sound like double punishment? Think, we'll now start a study. What if you're driving a vehicle that is not yours? You're driving for a company that is not yours. And points coming off your license. I mean, they will not pay the ticket in it. But what if points coming off your license? What provision do I have installed for that? Think. You need a wife? Go ahead. Well, right here and I'm back. Now, what if this thing's taking place and why? Why the system is not malleable? Now, I would have been here in plenty of the interviews, but to bring you up to speed, we are going to straight into these videos and you, the general public, make your own deduction. Again, my name is Renison Jeffrey. This is the Workers' Rights Platform. Like, share, and subscribe. You see, this is the only platform in which you can get views and commentary like this. We ain't trying to boost. Tell me, wherever you're getting this without a bias, like how we are bringing it to you. Which one of them are stepping up to the plate? So what we are going to do is air those videos and you make your own deduction. Message us in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Because the system, that system is a little bit biased and it's just geared to making money and not in educating the public about driving safely. Now we're going to show you a model from our next country. I'm going to show you the arrogance of this traffic commission. Stay tuned. My name is Ramsewa. I'm from South, I'm from Pinal. I represent drivers on the whole. Right? The other time, I drive truck, right? I drive a 10 wheel out of fans. The time I'm going down the highway with a load of dripping with half and half on top of my truck. You understand? Who's a truck driver? They're going to know how truck does be when it has load, especially a dripping with load. A man in a phone in front of me now with an Altis, smashing brakes, pulling back off, smashing brakes, pulling back off. I would have load truck behind you. You understand? If I have put a bounce, you know what? I just pull my indicator, I overtake him. And I pull back on the I pull up, I can't even sign Mr. Policeman on the side. Yes, sir, where's the problem? Yeah, no. I got a problem, I guess so, but you can't come back on the right side. You say, you know, you're going over the limit. I say, by how much? You say, by four. I say, by four. So, what about the man who was who talking on the phone? Then? Right? The man talking on machine breaks and whatnot. I would have a load of garbage. So, you're telling me how to do my work then? Right? So you are seeing what's going on in the road, but you see the man who overtake it and going back on the, on the left hand side, right? Yeah. So I, eventually I, I come and I get two points on my phone. Right, with 1500 dollars for, for four points. Right? So just say that to, say that go on with me, you know, for about four or five people for the year. While I do my work, my work is on dry fit. You understand? I do that with five, about four or five vehicles and it's stuck me four or five times and charge them. Yeah, 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 the targeting drivers on the road and pulling drivers on the road as a face criminal while the criminal, criminal them running through. You understand? Mm. Killing and shooting people, you are with people, you are with innocent people, and the drivers on the road have to pay the take way. You're not taking that. Motorists, yeah, motorists yeah, yeah. Are the right? We're not taking it. At the end of the day, when we buy gas, when we pay insurance, when we buy groceries, right, right. pass inspection, we're mining all of them. Without we, them is nobody. 
My name is Sheldon Davis. I have worked for your children as only highway. Living for and I'm a brother to support this morning. My van, I was sitting there. My van was in a little trouble this morning. And police come. I let them know that my, my, my van is working good. They, they embarrass me. I have to move. I have to move. So I said, my engine mash up. They were going on. But at the same time, my partner come, and I take my time and I drive. And they follow me. How the police resources on taxi driver? They leave me from QF taxi stand and follow me all the way to Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to say me a lie. Yeah, madness. Four police in our vehicle, like and we and, and 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 things can be good. Right and you you're studying a taxi driver. And I let you know something I'm the vehicle. They know themselves and they will know what go on this morning. Yeah. And I'm a living to fear to, 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 to back up that. Yeah. I see thing they do. You hear what they're doing again? We walk into them. They will come on the taxi stand to them. Stand up. But you're going by the drug block. Yeah. You're going by the drug block, but all this kind of the taxi stand means criminal. And I said, which criminal? Children, all of you know what wrong thing we do. Yeah. We providing a service yeah. for people who like me. You can't pull your van on top. Mm. You have to come back in life. So if he come to try to hire me, he had to wait three hours for to come in line. And I, my friend, I could go my way. I want to do it. They victimizing me, the police. Mm -hmm. I want to call no name and I could call some name and call him. <laughs> I, I could call name and I'm afraid and I could call him. Call us. Call us. Call name. Call us. All right. Everybody said, don't call no name. Anyhow, love in your house, but everything we have, the thing they victimize, they, they victimize. They why it and we have to pay. The minister doesn't pay no money. But we have to pay as taxmen all the pressure. When they're going to be highway in the morning, woo, 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 woo. They're on their way. They're running you off the road. And I have to sit down there now in the traffic going up the road. And my wife will get pain. And she asks. Anyhow, yeah, love in your house. I am here to represent Route 2, Maxi Taxi, Red Band, plus the motorcyclists, plus the heavy truck drivers as well. Well, I'm a heavy tea truck driver as well, right? And I'm very hurt. And Mr. Carol Clark gave me the wrong information. Yeah. I would say that here this afternoon. I would say in front of his face as well. He gave me the wrong information. Right? Right? Many people are really familiarized with the computer chain. My mother can answer lies, no, so I'm going to stop it. I'm talking in a manner like, do you know that? You understand? But I want to keep one character to deal with you. You understand? Yeah, there's talk to people like if it's true. Oh, which way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. You have no respect. Yeah, and they sure. want you to respect them. Right? Yeah, yeah. Very yeah. okay. Um, the gentleman, say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We represent the Nero Tremont Taxi Association, and there are truck owners, QF Taxi. Right, um, it have, it have sometimes on the highway, right? What I my highlight is about the, the 65 kilometers on the highway for maxi taxis and well, truck, minivan, whatever the delivery vans and them. The, the, the 65 is too slow, it caused an other accident on the highway, like the kiss man, right? He was driving 65 going down the highway, the man was coming in 100, couldn't have pulled so, so he hit them and had hit them. You run off the road and dead. Mm. And at that time, my cousin going down the highway, a man driving 65 here, he tried to slip in here too and touch my cousin, he going across the highway and wife dead. So the 65 kilos causing all of that deaths on the highway. Mm. We want the light to us to know that race, we, we, we speed limit mm. between 80 and 100 also because they have to have a balance. They yeah. drive too slow and too fast. Yeah. Right? And it, 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 um, Come down to the like the taxi men and them. We 
the police keep passing them. They can't get back. When they can't get back, they make the whole rounds come back. The police running them again, you know? It's unfair to them to just keep driving. So it have a lot of issues, but you know, you know, we have to come together at a certain point and, and bring all the issues together. And then, well, we will see what could go on from there. Hey, man. So, so in a nutshell, from what I'm regarding, is that would you all say that it would be good if we have a one-on-one -on -one dialect or conversation with the you know, transport commissioner? Yeah. And the relevant authorities to see if we could bring a mediation and the Minister of Transport. And, and Minister of Transport to see if we could bring an end to this oppressive system, right? That is causing un unemployment, by the way, creating unemployment unconstitutionally, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm a I, I want to represent the people, the people as a whole, the motorcyclists, the, the, the drivers. The taxi yeah. drivers, Trinidad and Tobago, and by extension, the world. The issue I have, and I could echo what Darren was saying, take it, take it, case in point, the case truck driver who was driving the speed limit, and the car that hit him, and he died on the spot, and he was driving the speed limit. That is another reason, with the Transport Commissioner, Mr. Minister of and Transport, that we need to consider some sort of consistency where he's driving the speed limit is concerned if you have a truck driving at 65 kilos i understand there are trucks that breach the speed limit and they could be a hazard to others but for those that drive the speed limit look at what happened to the gentleman from this who was driving the speed limit he didn't break any laws but he lost his life and had he been driving 100 kilos he may have had a better chance at being alive today so we need to consider that when we go forward. Additionally, as drivers, you drive along the roadway and sometimes you have an appointment at a particular place and then you have roadblocks which are unconstitutional that prevent you from getting to your point safely and in a timely manner. The, the reality is, ladies and gentlemen, the roadblocks always deter you and they do not ever detect any type of crime. It's always traffic offenses and traffic offenses only. So I am saying that if we have a crime problem in Trinidad and Tobago, we have an unemployment problem in Trinidad and Tobago. We are contributing to the crime when we create traffic because no criminal is driving up in traffic to meet no police officer or no licensing officer. You are yeah. telling you are telling criminals you are telling criminals that I have a I have a big amount of police officers focused on this point here, so the other points are safe. Mm. So when you have a roadblock, let me say in front of Siri Ram, you can have crime taking this rampant in Shogunas because the police are not focused in Shogunas. And the criminals are smart enough to know this. Additionally, we have issues with gentlemen, not me per se, but we have gentlemen who get in, and, and ladies who get in tickets. And when they pay the tickets, the points still remain in the driver's pocket. Where's the consistency with that? We have issues with the port system. Let us revert. I understand. I understand that it's cheaper for the judicial uh, system to work the way it's working. Online is cheaper for the government. We all know that. Yeah. It's cheaper. Yeah. So that you don't have to attend court. They don't have to turn on the lights in the court and all these different things. And less people travel through the courts. And that costs the government less. So you go online and you do your thing. But a certain, certain arm of the private sector still makes the same amount of money. We go say who that is. But the reality is we need to focus on the rights of the people. The people are the, the ones who pay taxes. The people are the ones who cause the economy to turn. The people are the ones who spending their money every day, supporting local and all these different things. And we need to understand that. With now, what these people have been speaking about is one, the harsh and oppressive system. Two, the behavior of the Trinidad and Tobago police. And four, the licensing officers. And the situation, the one size all type approach by these officers and licensing officers and them the situation that varies out in the real world and what they are trying to say is this the system that they're trying to impose is dictatorial sometimes situations may vary and what they are asking for is variation as to treat with the many things because they make the system real hard to oppose the ticketing
And what they are trying to enact here is to get assistance from the people in power. Now stay tuned, we are going into a video here now. What you will see here is the behavior of the licensing commissioner and his colleague. You go see. You go see. You go see. What we are saying is, two years you get one ticket. You accept it. Maybe I had a breach because I misunderstood the law, right? And you get a ticket. And a year and a half later, you get an next ticket for three points. When two years come, the first three points is not the race. Piling up the ticket, bringing the points to an amount where he's not going to have the right under the Constitution. So it comes in conflict of his rights. This is what they're actually saying. They're just not saying it legally. And this is what we would like you, governing over the Transport Board, to bring to the attention so that we can have a review of these point systems, the merit points, which is affecting their livelihoods. This is what they would like to ask me for you. Because I know, and after looking at it properly, that you do have some representation in that aspect. We have, an, we have existing laws. If you have challenges that impact you with the law in terms of what you require, I wouldn't suggest that you leave it to the commissioner only. Right? You do have an association. And I want to I want to point out with the association of the making the same representative. I as the commissioner have a responsibility to execute what is there in the law. I don't see a conflict in terms of what the law says in terms of what, 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 what exists. I strongly advise if you feel so passionate about it, I, I advise you that you can, you can turn the paper, you can go you can, you can, you can, you can, the paper, you can My responsibility is to treat the law in law says in terms of that is the law. On the contrary, I have seen and have known the fact that the Honorable Minister would have listened to some of the concerns we have with the law and um, which we were treated with the merit points as totally offensive. And once law exists, I agree with you, there's always room for and for amendment. I'm not yet to discuss today to say whether the board was supersede and so forth. Again, that's a matter for the legal fraternity, and they could answer that question. The point I want to make, once you are so passionate about an issue, you can take it to the proper time to treat with the commissioner as you can make and then have to do what you do. I also want to point out something I thought I thought I thought you would have raised you know, is that most times or all times when the commissioner takes a decision on matters related to other as other aspects of things, you normally take the time to inform the board that the same law allows allows someone the opportunity that they could that they could see. We just saw the chance, what board, but I get the chance to go up with the capacity. And it's good that is here because I always say to my staff, it's not good when you, and I said in the early community, when you allow an individual or an office to have power and they feel like it unto themselves, there must be a guiding body to treat it. And that is quite right. But there should be you put on the channel that. Right? Also, the association of Maxi Taxis. Have a representative on the transport. Uh, Mr. Charles, and then the treasurer. Mm -hmm. Mr. Charles, the head of service, Max So, given your opening statements about the future technology and all the different things, I would like to ask a few questions with relation to the Max Taxi Act, 4853, section 12A use of electronic devices, right? That will be, that will be, now, given my experience in the field and the fertility, we've gotten a lot of feedback, ESA, I would say at this point, that certain things were being allowed by the licensing commission, meaning cameras, screens, these different things, but under what guise of it, what, what, where, where, where can we find that if we have to get us in writing, right? Because. I've heard of some instances where people were stopped, people would think certain things were confiscated, whether it be music, lights, whatever, 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 whatever. But I would like you to point out what exactly we are allowed to do or what we are not allowed to do. Because in the law it says one thing, 
but then we are hearing things that we have a similar allowances by licensing office. So I would like to know exactly what we are allowed from, from what we are not allowed to do. Um, information. What we need to understand is that any ticket that is issued to anyone, one could, one could contest that ticket. I want to make that absolutely clear. I want to also take the opportunity to wonder if the questions come, come later on. Once you contest a ticket, at that point in time, no sanctions could be applied to your record, no demerit points until that ticket is actually given up. That's the no. Right? So I'm saying, though, I will put forward that justification. What an advice person is not to do, not to take a posture and don't pay the ticket, and then go the commission or the to get three sanctions. That's the discussion by itself. And the ministry, right. I work here, we have to accept the forum. And so I say, so where the bus should start and where it ends, you refer to that. No, the bus should stand. 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 Yeah, yeah, like the oh, maxi stand. stand. Maxi taxi stand where does it and the main road maxi taxi stand where does it start and where does it end where is it gasseted where I can go and say well I'm going by this person and I can find that information to get that information. All right, good, I get you. Okay. Let me answer your first question. No problem, right? Yes. Um, one in relation to, if we are practical, what we do practical in the no personal country, so nowhere will allow it, anywhere where there is where there is public transportation and being people to stop any and anywhere. That's one. No, 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 wait a minute, listen to this. So, no system will allow, basically, to watch a, 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 a road where persons are traveling, to stop any and anywhere for hire. Once you allow that, just think about it, it will be chaos. It must be, it must be coordinated in order to allow in order to allow free, free flow of traffic. So, so that's not something the commissioner will even recommend later on to allow taxi taxis or any people to just stop anyway and take up passengers. That's one. What on the, on, on, on the other hand, the, and which I have been having discussion with, with that, I have been having discussion with the, uh, with the traffic management branch because, because they have a responsibility to ensure that they have proper, they have proper signage. signage, they have proper um, access to information as to where exactly someone is supposed to stop. And currently, they are existing, but some that used to be and some have some been removed, right? And this is something I know, I know the Chapel Management Branch are working on. For the commissioner to come here and tell you on the bus route exactly, here is supposed to have a sign, here is supposed to have a sign, we cannot provide that, that information. Now, I believe, however strongly, that the ministry has a responsibility to have clear demarcation of, of that. that and this is what they are currently working on. Let's take, however, we know, however, one or two stops where, are, where there are demarcation of where you can stop and where you can pick up. There are existing ones in terms of that. You cannot allow for the cost to stop anywhere. Now, now so, so this, this brings the point of, also to have the president my, my, my the point of, because I know there are more than a number of clamor in terms of, uh, in terms of, in terms of, in terms of stands for maxi taxi, where, where should we start? We have another discussion now, we check our bus and just we are, uh, we are looking at. Um, again, the, the official stands that, that exist, those are those are some we can we can also identify that at a later time because I don't I, I don't want to come here today and point out to you that, that, that the document that you say here is a stand. We have to confirm that to reach out to find it back. Because we do know Based on recent development on the bus route, there have been some money, there have been some modification. So my preferred position is to get that information, pass it to the president who will be seeing it. I believe there is need for it. Where we might be want to be headed is on the basis that 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 that, that, that an officer, and by that I mean an enforcement officer, whether you're transit traffic or in police, will issue you a ticket for probably stopping for somewhere that you think within your mind. There isn't sufficient signage or there isn't sufficient um, information. One needs to understand that any ticket 
that this issue for anyone, one could, one could confess that he did. I will make that absolutely clear. I want to also take the opportunity once I hear the questions come, come later on. Once you contest a ticket, at that point in time, no sanctions could be applied to your record, no demerit points until that ticket is actually getting on. That's the no. Right? So I'm saying though, and you put forward that justification. What a vice person is not to do, not to take a posture and don't pay the ticket, and then both the commission are to get two sanctions. That's the discussion by itself. I will, I, I will just leave the, the president to pick who will be public speaking and send it to the president. Right? Well, one, one of the things, though, and we've uh, had a discussion with the uh, 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 right? Here, and for the moment, Mr. Bennett said, currently, where there exists signs, let me take, for example, this is the process. Where there exist signs that there exist, exist the necessary legislation and gossip and signs, you have every breaches taking place. So I am saying, though, I will not like to know that we take the steps to lobby to provide that information and continue to see the practice because again we talk about behavior. Sure. So I want us to understand where it exists we find in breaches. And therefore if you put more, you might find more breaches. So so we have to work together as a team. Just allow the judge to have that vice president. My name is Andrew Ferro. Um I've been in, the, in this industry just about a decade now. Um about the matter about Sawa going up the road, right? There are many times I'm proceeding east. And, um, because we are we are not a full soul nation, we are not a full soul country. Um, and a lot of our citizens are now old, over 60, 65 years. And sometimes it take a lot of time to come out of the maxi. And misjudgment as their as, as, as their stuff as well. Um, so for instance, after Sawa by the traffic light, like sometimes Somebody might press the bell. And me as a driver, I find it's unfair to cry them all the way up to the substation, an old woman with a bag, to walk back down. So sometimes I may see a police officer or a license officer up here and still stop because it is, it is of my um, discretion that, you know, that you will give us a blight, right? Because, I mean, we, we in the Caribbean, this is not the first world, well, we're still developing. All right. So, are you all gonna have a discussion? Are they all gonna? Yeah, well, I see. I see. We need to have a discussion to 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 be preaching the traffic sign. I'm not preaching the sign. I'm asking kindly. Are you all open to having that discussion? Okay. And if it is, we get in that discussion, right? And I come up here and I see you jumping on some. I see this, right? And I am to and I see you and somebody jumping into your maxi. Where are you going to answer? Well, the judgment is up to you. But you, see, you see, you know in that area, I don't want to say anything. Yes, okay. Even any enforcement officer, in terms of what offense, have a level of discretion in the room. And, I, and nobody can determine, I cannot tell my staff how much discretion to put in place. Right? right? Because I'm saying, I say that is left to them. You always have your initial contest. And what does your magistrate, somebody see here, and that's what I think. It's you I want, I want to ponder on. Why we say that? I can tell you when you are on the ground. We can speak for you. The average person, the job person, there who may not be in that situation. And I'm saying the enforcement officer do exercise discretion. And let me just share this with you as the I, I was on the bus to send me some time ago. And I stand by and look at my own, look at one or two officers, and when police fans and passion, I then encourage that. Hmm. Basically, so when I stop a particular officer and I ask him to show me the um, the bus you pass, he would have pointed out to me that uh, he just came on the bus you that you know he broke in here and things that he wanted to come up and I didn't want to I told him I said, if I check your record now and I see any warning on this, I will treat it to you. I can present this discussion and take what you say. When I check that officer record, he had six warnings for the bus you. Yeah, so you look at it. Six warning, and I'm saying though sometimes we have to be careful and, and, and understand this idea of discretion is a subjective one. Okay, let's move on. Yes,
All right. It's a pleasant good day to all. My name is Adrian Acosta, president of the Trinidad and Tobago Taxi Drivers Network. And this is Dennis, treasurer, and Matt, secretary of the um, network. All right. And we are here to, to, the, to discuss some issues that are negatively affecting us as taxi drivers throughout the country, which is, you know, we have been lobbying for some laws to help us better our working place, which is our taxi stands, for over eight years now, and that has not been forthcoming. So we are saying to our minister, our line minister, Mr. Rohan Sinanan, that that is very disrespectful, right? And um, we have reached our place where we, have, where we have no other choice but to come outside here on a regular basis and voice our our cause. All right, um, so that we are here today to also discuss the situation where with these um, new laws that they are bringing forth that, that will put a great strain on the citizens of China by extension, taxi drivers and the drivers of this country on the roads every day. All right, so we are taking this opportunity today to share our disgust with what is going on at this point in time. Right, we have some also have some issues where drivers are complaining that uh, when they go to the insurance that um, the insurance comp some of the insurance companies are allegedly um, going on some, some website to see if they have points or not and if they have points they are raising their premium on their insurance we are saying that the insurance at this point in time that is of no good intention points have nothing to do with the insurance right the reason the only reason that your premium should go up on the insurance as if you get into an accident, right? So the insurance, some of the insurance at this point in time is using this new right. system that the government is putting in place to raise the premium on people insurance. We are saying that is unjust and unfair, right? And we'll be taking the opportunity to write to the, the, the persons in authority who are in charge of insurance to investigate these matters, right? As I said before, that is our great just to the citizens where the insurance has insurance on them. It's not raising their premium because of some points that you have on your driver's permit, right? And we are saying we are not going to stand and take that just so. We are going to speak out on a regular basis concerning the injustice that is being taken place on a daily basis against taxi drivers and the, the, the driving public. Right? We have also complained right. about the um, regular activity of okay. illegal pH operating around our stand and on a regular basis. We have complained about that on a million times on many occasions to the person's authority and everybody seems to be turning a blind eye to this um, illegal activity. Right? So we are saying we are hoping that the person's authority helps and they take um, some serious action. Concerned that we are saying that if you want to work taxi, there is already a process in place for you to go and get your taxi badge and work taxi as a legal um, entity. Right? The same way that you can come out in the night and work, right? Work um, PH. If you get your taxi badge, there is no law in Trinidad and Tobago that stops you from working taxi in the night. So we are urging the persons in authority who are responsible for keeping law and order to do so. Right? So we are also talking about. Um, you know, the government is now clamping down on um, the drivers on the roadway, whether it be taxi drivers or the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. We are saying that, you know, if you are clamping down on the citizens and, you know, behind them to do what is right, we are also saying that has also has to um, come from the top two, right? So you can't just come and clamp down on the citizens and um, you are not clamping down on the illegal activity that is going on in and around the persons in high positions, right? Such as we are talking about, you know, somebody got uh, $3 million to build a zip line in Tobago. All they could have gotten was a ball of rope for that $3 million. Nobody was, um, nobody was held accountable for that. Nobody was penalized for that. We are also talking about um, five men died, right? Five men died in a pipeline in, in, in five men, five or four men died in a pipeline in Petrochrin. Right? Nobody was held accountable. So I'm saying to you, I'm saying to the persons of charity, if you are holding the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago accountable for their actions, these people need to be held accountable for their actions too. You cannot penalize the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago right? on a regular basis and you are leaving these people to run free. That is an injustice right? and we would not stand for that. Right? We are saying it has the, the, the betterment of our country you know, supposed to start from the top 
and not the butter. Right? So while you are holding the citizens accountable for their actions, the persons in authority are supposed to be held accountable for their actions when they do wrong things too. Not giving a pat on their back. Right? So we are saying to the government, right? ticketing the people or the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago is not the only way to go. Right? We have said that there are incentives that you can add right, to different things to bring law and order to Trinidad and Tobago. There are countries who are already doing it. Right? But it seems that the persons in authority only know about penalizing the citizens of, of Trinidad and Tobago to get them to do the right thing. So we are saying try another way. Right? If you really want to be meaningful, try another way. Right? There are incentives that you can give to the driving public to help them do what is right. Do you all have any questions?